Hey everybody, it's Josh here. In this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to add five or six columns to your Divi website. By default, the Divi Builder only allows us to add up to four columns in a row. It's pretty frustrating. There's numerous times where you wanna have you know, five images across or six text modules across, but for whatever reason, right now Divi doesn't give us that ability. There must be something in the framework that makes it difficult to add because I know that the guys at Elegant Themes are working hard to solve the major issues and the major problems. And one of them that I see commonly in the Divi Facebook groups is the ability to have five or six columns or even more. So I'm gonna show you how I do it. It's very easy and we're gonna come up with this look here to where we have the ability to add five columns and six columns. And I'm gonna do you one better. I'm also gonna make this a free layout. So at the end of the tutorial, you can see how I build it and you're gonna be able to download this and you can add it to all of your websites. And I'm also gonna show you how to tweak it and make it your own. Even if you wanna make seven or eight columns, I'll show you how to do that as well. So. Let's start out with why you might wanna have more than four columns across. Well, here's an example of a site I'm working on right now. It's for a home inspector, and he had five certifications. And what I wanted to do was add these in one row instead of put, putting them separately. So I'm using the same method that I'm using on this site that I'm gonna show you how to do. And in another case on the same site, he had 12 services, 12 main services, and instead of lining them up in rows of four that took up more page width, I went ahead and used my method and I just did two rows of six. This is using the blurb module, and up here, these are just images. So again, with what I'm gonna show you, you're gonna be able to put any module and we're gonna be able to make five or six columns. And we're gonna do this, I meant to mention as well, without using a plugin or without any convoluted code, just a little bit of CSS, and you're gonna be on your way. So let's go ahead and dive in, guys. So I'm on my test site here, and I went ahead and just got the page started for us to save some time. So I have five images. Let's go ahead and preview this. And you're gonna see that initially, of course, these are just gonna show up down here, just five images from top to bottom. Now, what I wanna do is I used to go into each module and adjust the width percentage to make them line up in fives, but that became really that became a big pain because when I wanted to make any changes, I had to go into each module and change the settings. So I'm gonna show you the new way I do it, which is very user-friendly, and that is to actually go first into the row. So we're gonna click the row open, and we're gonna to go to the Advanced tab, and we're gonna give this a class. We're gonna give this a class of five dash columns and we're gonna go ahead and save this. And what's really cool is the code I'm gonna show you we're gonna create is gonna make each module in here line up at the correct percentage to give this a five or six column row. So let's go ahead and update that now. We're gonna go ahead and bounce over to our style sheet. I do have a tutorial on where to put your custom CSS if you're not familiar with how to log in through FTP. But you can see here I've got this section that's all set up for us and we're gonna go ahead and add that class. So what did I call it? Five columns. Now here's one thing that's very critical and one thing that I wanna show you is I added that class in this row and what we can do is we can make it basically say that each one of the modules in this row needs to line up at what we're going to dub as 20% which is going to mean that it's going to row it's going to show up in fives. So let's go ahead and bounce to our style sheet and we want to add after five columns we want to add this little tag right here that says the ETPB module. And what, again, what that's gonna do is meaning that every module that's within the row that's labeled five columns is gonna show up with this coding. So first things first, we wanna go ahead and add a width of 20%. And the reason we're doing 20% is because 100% divided by five is 20%, which is going to give us the five columns. We're gonna go ahead and add important. And the other thing I wanna add, just because I played around with this, is I know that I want this, I want each module to float to the left. So check this out. We're gonna go ahead and save this. The page is saved again with that class of five columns in the row setting. So now, okay, just told me it's saved. Now let's preview and we should see these images line up in five columns. And there we go. You can see by just giving this row a class of five columns and us just telling it, hey, we want every module in that column to be 20% 
there we go it sets it up automatically now one thing we can do here is is they're automatically close together let's say we just want to maybe add some padding in between here well no problem we can go ahead and click the image and I do have a separate tutorial on how to use inspect element if you're curious about what I'm doing here but we're gonna go into these five columns and let's just add padding and let's do like 20 pixels that should look pretty good yeah there we go so let's go ahead and take this drop this in our style sheet and there we go this is all set up so now let's go ahead and try six so in this case let's just go ahead and duplicate this we want to add one more image to make sure there's six images and we're going to go into the row settings and now we're going to assign this a different class we're going to call this six columns instead of five let's go ahead and save this now that that's saved let's bounce to our style sheet Let's go ahead and just copy all this code to make this easier on us and let's go into our six column section and we're gonna replace this to six columns. And instead of the width being 20%, to get six columns, we wanna do 16.6. .6. How, how do I know that so quickly? Because I have done this more than once, my friends, and I've learned the hard way. So we're gonna go ahead and save the style sheet. Now that we've got a row here with six modules, again, we've updated the class, just making sure it says six columns, there we go. Now, we've got that all saved, let's preview, and under this, we should see six columns. And there we go, easy peasy. It's almost too good to be true, right? All you have to do is just add this text right here, this code, and just make sure the width is set up correctly, and you are good to go. Now, again, what's so cool about this is if we go back into our five columns, any module we put in here is going to show up. So we could say, you know, this is a blurb. Let's just put some text here. Let's say we wanna add a module. Maybe we wanna just add some text. Uh, let's just say text here. And let's go ahead and duplicate this. So we've got two text modules. Let's go ahead and do another image as well. Okay, so we should see image, blurb, image, and a couple text modules. Again, everything, any module that is in this row right here is gonna show up as our five. Easy peasy. Now, one thing I wanted to mention is that if you wanna do more, uh, like if you wanted to do another row of five, because this is custom coded, I recommend that you just duplicate the module, the actual row module, because um, if you keep on adding under here, it can be a little wacky since we're using the float. So I just recommend just duplicating that module and then you can preview the changes and it's good to go, easy peasy. Now, okay, so that's looking good, we're feeling confident. The question becomes, well, how does this look on mobile? Well, let's go ahead and check that out. Let's go ahead and delete that. Let's just go ahead and work on the sixth column right now to make this easier on us. So yeah, it's a valid question. Okay, well, how does this look on mobile? Because if I bring this in, you can see on mobile, wow, those look teeny. Well, easy peasy, all we need to do is add a nice little media query, and then we just need to change the width. So let's go ahead and bounce over to our style sheet, and we're gonna add a scary media query, which is basically just saying, hey, once the screen gets to 479, which is common for a phone, what we wanna do is we just wanna change the width. So we're gonna go ahead and just copy and paste everything that we have here, paste it in there, and we don't even need the float or the padding. We're just gonna keep that the same. It's taking this, you know, it's reading that, okay, we, it already knows it's gonna to float to the left. It's gonna be 20 pixels of padding, but we wanna change the width, let's say 50. So now, check this out. We're gonna go ahead and save that. And then out on our site, we're gonna go ahead and clear the cache. And now when I scroll this down to the phone mode, you'll see those images kick up to 50%. There we go. Right when we hit 479, it went to 50%. Now that's typically what I do in cases for the five columns and the six columns is on mobile. I'll go in here and make sure it's 50. And again, I can look in here, I can inspect element and I can see where this code was changed. So let's say actually I wanted those to line up in threes. Well, I could go 33% and it's gonna line up in threes. And if I wanted that padding gone under this media query, I could do a padding of zero or you know maybe bump it up a little bit. And let's make this, let's zoom this in a little bit so we can see this a little better. Let's go 75, it looks pretty good. So again, that's how you would tweak those. So in this case, I'm gonna go back here. Now, I wanna, keep in mind tablet as well because you know that looks pretty good on phone but sometimes depending on what elements you have it could look huge on tablet so let me show you what i typically do for tablet i'm just going to copy all of this 
Tablet screen breaks down at 980, so I'm gonna do 980. And on tablet, I'm gonna say that I want these to be in rows of three. So on desktop, these are going to be, of course, rows of six. Once it hits tablet view, it's gonna be rows of three, the 33.3%. And then on mobile, it's going to have 50%. So now that we've got that set, it's saved. Let's go ahead and clear the cache. Okay, and now that we have all that saved, we're gonna go ahead and shrink in. And once we get to tablet view, boom, there we go. It goes to three, the 33%. And now if we keep on going on mobile, there we go, it looks beautiful as 50%. And again, you can just adjust the padding on any of this if you want to. So that's how easy it is, guys. All I did was, again, you go in here, you assign a class to the actual row, and then it's knowing that every module in here is going to have these settings, which in this case, we've adjusted to 50, or excuse me, 20% for the five column, 16.6 .6 for the six column. Now, what I wanna do is, I actually liked you know, that 33% and the 50% on phone and tablet. So in this case, I'm just gonna go up here and I'm gonna use those same settings. And I'm just gonna make sure that I have this labeled right. That way, anytime I use five and six columns, it's good to go. Now, you could use this same method for adding seven or eight rows. So let's go ahead and try this out. Of course, I'm using six columns, but let's add a couple more images here. And now let's go out to the site. And you can see again here that it's gonna start adding images below. And I said before that you should use a new row, but you can try it out. You know, you can try it out to see if that'll work. But again, in this case, what if I had eight images that I wanna go across? I generally wouldn't go more than six for columns, but you could if you had small images. Let's just take this down, check this out. I can see that 13.6% uh, added that seventh row. And now if I keep on going, there we go. And I tell you what, I think, uh, I'm not sure exactly what eight is, but you could just play around with this. So 13 bumped it, so let's try 12, and there we go. You could adjust the padding. And now, if I wanted to create an eight column, all I would have to do is take these settings, drop it in my style sheet, and then of course I would just label it you know, eight columns instead of six. And then you could go in here, and you could go into your row settings, and I could label this eight columns instead of six. I could call this eight columns, and again, I can just adjust this accordingly with what I just played around with on Inspect Element. So it's that easy, guys. I hope this has helped. Again, I'm making this a free layout for you. So, I mean, really all you need is you can copy the code that I've created here and then I'll, I'll format this, make sure it looks clean for you in the post. That way you can copy, put it in your style sheet. But all you would really need to do is just label the row correctly, but I will make this a free layout for you and it's gonna look like this so you can import it and you can start having some fun with your Divi website. So if you guys have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, have fun finally being able to easily, without a plugin or without any convoluted code, adding five or six columns to your Divi websites. Cheers, guys.